Salesforce.com. Morning sickness wasn't something Clementine had imagined when they found out they were having a child. It certainly wasn't pleasant. She was kneeling beside the toilet of the room Javi had assigned the, for them, her small hands clutching the sides. According to the watch by her bed, it was barely 6 30 in the morning, so Louis was still sound asleep. A sickening feeling overpowered her stomach as she leaned forward, vomiting the previous night's dinner. Her head had spun as she closed her eyes for a moment. The room that they had been given in was suspicious though, even though it was, had, was, had once by once been a master suit in the rundown hotel. The king size bed stood in the middle, two nightstands flanking on each side, and then there was a wardrobe right next to the container's sh- stacks of the cold old clothes. Most of them were moth-eaten, but Clementine had imagined to find a plain in black shirt to, to replace her old stained white tank top. She had a soft knock. She heard a soft knock in the bathroom and she turned to see her husband at the first hold. He had some kind of a smile even though her eyes were groggy from sleep. Are you okay, my baby? He asked, kneeling beside her. Yeah, just had morning sickness is all, she assured him, offering him the best grin that she could muster. The man placed a comforting hand on her cheeks, caressing it with her thumb with his thumb softly. You need me to get you anything? I'm good, she said, nodding. You should go wake AJ up. Standing on, Lewis said, on it, and placed a kiss on Clementine's forehead before exiting out the room. She watched him leave, her smile never leaving her face. She thought about the impact that Lewis had on had on AJ's life, and still marveled at the affection that the two really shared. He had really had became a great father figure to the boy, and she was sure that he would be even a better one for their child. Closing her eyes, Clem pushed herself off the toilet and stood up. She wiped her mouth with her sleeve and jacket and turned on to the bedroom. Preparing for the day ahead, Javi had asked them to her to meet him at the office early in the morning for a further discussion of their unique situation. Clementine met Louis and AJ at the bottom of the stairs, abandoning her dim jacket for the day and instead choosing the black shirt alone. The trio walked down the hallway towards the main office. She had told Javi about the reasons behind her coming to Richmond. He'd escort her and the others to the rooms and bid them before midnight. According to him, he needed time to think. They arrived at the set of the oak tree double doors, ordinaring the handles. Louis knocked softly and stepped back, offering Clementine a wink as the door opened. Javi let them inside, still rubbing the sleep off, off of his eyes. Unlike his room, Javi's office was much more organized. On the right, on the right wall, a number of framed of pictures from the previous owner hung loosely. She noticed some pictures were of Javi, Gate, and Gabe, though they were pinned by walls by thumbtacks, and the big desk was stood close to the back wall. A couple of chairs stood in front of it. They looked. They each took a seat. Javi sat beside behind the desk with his arms crossed. So you're pregnant? He asked out of way of introduction. Yeah. Well, you're in luck. Javi announced, clapping his hands. We currently have nine pregnant women in the community which they are all carried in for with the great equipment we have. That's great, Lewis said, nodding at the man. But what's the catch? Javier chuckled, called making the wrinkles that he he had formed around his eyes, they were noticeable. No catch, I assure you, he said, shaking his head. We will have to talk about your accommodations here. Plus, we need to go over the rules of the place. I understand, Clem said, smiling at the man. You've become a great leader, Javi, she complimented. Thank you, Clem. Javi shifted his seat, leaning his elbows on the desk. So let's talk about business. Are you all staying here? You're first of all? No, Lewis answered. Just the three of us. Violet wants to be back with Minnie and the rest, so we'll co- she'll come for you every now and then to check on us. She's leaving in a few hours, so we want to let her sleep in. Smart idea, Javi said. Ed, Ed I don't think you'll be staying longer than you have to, right? Well... We'll have to stay until the baby's born and then see what to do from there, Clem said, frowning. This is all new to us, she added, putting her hand on her stomach. They spoke the accommodations after that. Lewis and Clementine would have to keep their suit. AJ would be moved to another adjoining room to that one that Clem has requested. Javi promised Violet that we should be able to crash at the guest room of his own own room whenever she gets a chance to drop by more than one day. 
after that was out of the way, Javi stood up, sat up straight. Now rules, he said. I'll trust you'll be respectful to all the citizens of Richmond. They nodded. Everyone must pull their own weight, one way or another. We can hunt, Clem suggested, glancing at Lewis. We've both been doing it for years. I don't know how you feel about you guys going out in that condition, Clem. Lewis said, frown slowly, fidgeting with his hands. What? You think I'll get killed because I'm pregnant? She inquired, raising an eyebrow, her tone mocking. No, I mean, Lewis began before he was cut off by Javi. No one goes out there by themselves, he assured the freckled man. Everyone goes out with a partner, and we have walkie-talkies just in case if you know, you case if anything happens. You know how to shoot? He asked AJ and Lewis. Yeah, replied the boy, looking at Clem. I don't, said Lewis, knitting his brow. Never had to learn, since we didn't get many guns in the first place. That's not going to cut it, Javi said. This afternoon, you'll be getting practicing your shooting down the range at the block. Clementine can join you if you like. She's a great shot. Thank you, Clem said, blushing. She turned to her husband. Don't worry, we'll make a marksman out of you. I guess, Lewis muttered. Suddenly, they heard a hard knocking coming from the door. Come in, Javi said. The door creaked open, heavy footsteps coming from behind Clementine. She saw Javi raised from his seat and had a smile turning to the left. She spotted the man that she hadn't seen in eight years. His beard was as much like Javi's and was shaved close and he wore a brown, a blue demi jacket over a red shirt. The man approached Javi and embraced him, oblivious to free some, some sitting by him. Got back in one piece, Gabe said as they broke apart, just like you asked. Chuckling, Javi clapped him on the shoulder. I'm glad, Gabriel, he said. We have some guests, actually. He added, glancing to his right. Who is it? Gabe began before she was being cut off by Clementine hugging him. He eyed at the freckled, ma freckled man and the boy sitting on the desk and looked down at the woman. Gabe? She exclaimed, looking up at him. It's been so long. Clementine? He stuttered, looking at Javi and then back at Clem. When did you get here? Yesterday, she informed him, leaning against the desk behind her. Javi gave us a room for us to stay in. That's, that's great, he said. His eyes, eyes letting up. And who this, these might be, he, had, he added, raising an eyebrow at Lewis and AJ. Oh, sorry, this is AJ, she gestured to the boy. He's sort of a son to me, she explained with a warm, explained with a warm smile on her face as AJ nodded at the man. And I'm Lewis, the freckled man said, rising and shaking Gabe's hand. Clem's husband, he added cheekily. Gabe did a double take and blinking at Lewis. Oh, that's great. He managed to say, piercing his lips. So what are you guys doing here? He asked, finally leaning on the desk. Javi sat down on his seat and crossed his arms. They came in here looking for shelter, he lied. I know, Clem. They will be staying with us for some time. All right, Gabe said, nodding. You gave him a briefing? He directed his question to Javi. I did, and they're more than happy to pull their own weight. That's good. I was actually about to suggest to head to the shooting range. Want to show them the way? Javi suggested. Sure thing, Javi. The young man nodded at Javi and stood up, beckoning the threesome to follow. They said their goodbyes to the leader and silently walked out of the office. The hallway was beyond busting with people by now. Most of them were not sparing a second glance of Clem and the rest. As they exited out of the building, Clem walked beside Gabe, Gabe at the front and they began catching up. Lewis walked next to AJ and a few paces, his eyes darting from from the part of town town that had been restored to existence. Kids were playing on the street. It was actually though the apocalypse had completely skipped the part of the world. Lewis thought this could be an alternative to the boarding school. His line of thought was cut short when Clementine laughed, laughed ahead of him. Lewis looked forward, catching Gabriel's grin as the woman looked at him. Raising an eyebrow, he quickly paid quickly quickened his pace to be with the pair here on close to them with AJ beside him he looked at the heard and listened to their conversation his eyes still on Gabriel Clementine's right they were reminiscing about the time they met and to engross on how Lewis's presence was beside him as he walked he accidentally bumped into the woman who was walking in the opposite direction he turned to apologize to her helping her up with the bus shell of apples that she dropped when he grabbed the final one off the ground and lifted his head, he was greeted with a smile from the woman's question. She wore a bell beige tank top, top with black hair, hair tied in the back in the ponytail. And she did have gray eyes, and she nodded, Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't see where I was going. It's no problem, she assured him. 
taking the apples from his hand and placing them into the basket. Lewis turned to notice that the others were keep going without him. He cursed under his breath. Sorry, gotta run, he announced. He announced, leaving the woman men standing in the middle of the street, catching up to the group. Minutes later, there Gabriel walked into the door with the legend range on it. Inside, rifles and handguns were lined on the wall, all ahead of him. Several small booths have covered the width of the room. Gabriel approached one of the handguns, and Lewis heard, heard a clicking noise. He had handed the freckled man a, the weapon. Its barrel pointed at itself, and Lewis looked at it. Sensing the tension was in between them, Clementine stood in and took Lewis's hand, leading him towards one of the booths. On the actual range, Lewis could see a number of targets in several heights. Clementine nodded and looked at him without her took out her own gun. All right, hold it just like I taught you. She began smiling as she followed her instruction as he followed her instructions. That's it. Now the safety is right here. She pointed at the small button at the side of the firearm and Lewis hesitantly pressed it. Okay, now what do I do? He asked, glancing his right at Clementine. First of all, remember it's just a thing, she exclaimed. She explained. Lewis frowned. What is that supposed to be? I don't know, she admitted, shrugging. Now take a deep breath and aim at your crosshair target. If you, When you want to hit it, I'd say start with the lower ones first. Sure thing, he trailed off. Holding the gun in both of his hands, he lifted up to the eye level, all too aware that AJ and Gabe were standing from behind, his hands shaking as he locked onto the cardboard or its silhouette that stood about, about 20 feet away from them. Taking a deep breath, he gently squeezed the trigger. He heard the distinctive bang and, and frown when he saw the bullet hole was about two feet, feet above the target's head. Well, that's a good start, Clem compl complimented, patting him on the shoulder. Let's go again. He practiced for a half an hour, Clementine's advice cluttering his mind as his attempts to hit the targets. So far, he barely managed to hit two of them in the chest area. Not good enough, he told himself. Preparing for the next shot, he fired the final round of the clip and glowed in frustration. He then yet had another bullet led to a door in from the wall into the target. He was thankful that nobody was in the shooting range aside from the four of them, but he was getting kind of tired of missing every time. I'm okay, move aside, he heard Gabe's voice shoot coming from behind him. This bearded man st stood up to his right, brand brandishing his own handgun. This is how you do it. Taking off the safety off the gun with one swift motion, Gabe fired five contentious shots, all five around their target heads. Show off, muttered Lois, Lewis, crossing his arms. That was some nice shooting, Gabe, commented Clementine, making him blush. Oh, thanks, he mumbled, scratching at the back of his head. Blinking up a few times, he t turned to Lewis. Look, I can teach you properly if you're up for it. Before Lewis can decline, Clem stepped in and smiled. That would be great, Gabe, she said, turning to Lois, Lewis and told him. Honey, you should listen to him. He probably knows a lot more about the technique of guns than I do. I'm pretty much out of practice. Plus, no offense, but you suck at this. Gabe added, earning a glare from both Lewis and AJ. Sorry, but it's the truth. You can get a lot better. Better, of course you can. I know I can. All right. I guess it wouldn't hurt to try, admitted Lewis. Let's begin. Over the next three weeks, Gabe and Lewis were met at the shooting rage every morning. The former led, led the latter through the different exercises to test his skills. Clementine had tried to attend a couple of their sessions, but the morning sickness would sometimes get too unbearable for her. She had convinced Javi during the meeting to keep up her condition a secret for the time being, so she wouldn't so she would really excuse herself claiming that she wanted to give AJ morning school lessons. She had managed to drop by one of Gabriel and and Lewis's training sessions shins one day, and AJ had been feeling under the weather and asked to sleep in. She entered the range and she was greeted by the sound of gunfire. At the, one of the booths, Lewis held the handgun in both of his hands, his eyes set on the moving target about 30 free from him. Gabe stood on the sides, his hands behind his back. Deciding not to interrupt, Clem leaned against the wall and watched as Lewis fired two more shots at the silhouette. They each found the head and torso of the target. She smiled at her husband's progress and started, started clapping, being startling the two men. Lewis recovered quickly and bowed dramatically in her direction. Thank you, thank you, he he exclaimed, flashing a toothy grin at her. When did you get so good? She inquired, raising an eyebrow. He's a natural, Gabe complimented. He just needs some confidence. 
Louis nodded and walked up to Clementine, gently pressed pressed a kiss on her forehead and turned to his teacher. What now, Gabe? He asked. Well, you're pretty set with the pistol, he reasoned, crossing his arms. You'll just have to keep that up. But I think we you could graduate I could we could graduate you with two rifles soon enough. Louis gulped and glanced down at Clementine, who smiled cheekily. Yeah, he thought. This might be a good place after all. He had to make it work for Clementine and their baby. If that means facing his fears head on head on, he would have to do with it for Clementine and the sake of their child. Why hello there, my little pretties. It's me, the Shadow Lioness. I hope you all enjoy my video of creepypasta. So, without further ado, <laughs> if you like the video, please leave a like. And if you want to survive my cave of terror, please hit the subscribe button down below. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Donate to my Patreon when you can. And the only way you're going to survive me in the cave is you're going to have to sub to me and press the bell for notifications so you'll get to know when I upload. <laughs> well, without further ado, my little pretties, I'll see you in the next video.